Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here. With Smash Bros. Ultimate just released, I thought it would be a good time to take a closer look at a fighter that I don't think many people expected to see, the Piranha Plant. Although there are a lot of people that have been unpleasantly surprised by the plant's addition to the roster, I actually welcome this because the plant's appearance has actually shed some more light on its origins and traits that I previously talked about in my What is a Piranha Plant video. Well, today I'm going to expand on what I mentioned there, so I recommend watching that video if you haven't already. And a small disclaimer, this is not a video that will be analysing the moveset of the Piranha Plant itself, nor how good of a fighter it is. Competitive gaming is not my thing and I don't really like fighting games. I've never really enjoyed Smash, and I'm not that good at it either, so if you're expecting some in-depth analysis for competitive play, you're in the wrong place. Anyways, let's take a closer look at the reveal video. So what we can see at the start is the Piranha Plant turning into a very dark and spiky version of itself with orange spines. Now we can already see how the Piranha Plant isn't just a ripoff of a Venus flytrap, but takes a lot of other traits from other insectivorous plants as well. While Venus flytraps have these spine-like cilia, the origins of these orange spikes could be from the Nepenthes ephipiata or the Nepenthes hamata. Nepenthes weren't really mentioned in my other video apart from at a small footnote, but that's because until now I questioned how much of the piranha plant's design was based on them. But considering they are found in Asia, it's very much a possibility that we need to consider. Nepenthes are a genus of pitcher plants that are native to the lowland and montane tropics of Southeast Asia. They are a type of pitfall trap, as in they work by luring insects to their peristome with sweet secretions before the insects lose their grip and fall into the digestive fluids within the pitcher. They act in pretty much the same way as the more temperate Saracenia genus, though Nepenthes tend to look a lot more colourful and cooler, such as the way that tropical plants look. I've been fortunate enough to see them in the wild in Borneo and they are really a sight to behold, especially because sometimes they appear to stick out against everything else. Anyways, the Nepenthes hamata is a crazy looking dark coloured pitcher plant with so-called teeth on its peristome. It's one of the scarier looking pitcher plants, and there are actually quite a few different Nepenthe species with teeth on their peristome like this. And they are also terrifying that this illustration inside this Nepenthes book that uses the Nepenthes villosa scared the crap out of me when I bought it in Borneo. The other thing about Nepenthes hamata though that is more unique to it is its hairiness. On its lid, there are many cilia, which could have formed the basis for the spine-like protrusions on this variant of the piranha plant, along with the hamata's dark colour, but this could also be attributed to the equally scary looking Nepenthes ephipiata. As well as this, there's an even hairier variant of the hamata that was discovered, which looks like it's growing fur. Moving along, we get a glimpse of the piranha plant running, which it may be doing with its roots, but it's also possible that these stumps are part of the piranha plant's rhizome, which can be seen for a couple frames here. Insectivorous plants can often grow right back from the rhizome, especially Saracenia, which are hardier than other types of insectivorous plants, and can survive as just the rhizome for years if the conditions are right, even if the plant above ground appears to have died off. This particular version of the piranha plant, which was first seen in the Super Mario Bros., resembles the Venus flytrap most closely when compared to the others, but it is also worth noting that many Saracenia share this colour scheme as well. This red and yellow coloration is reminiscent of the Saracenia flava, one of the more recognisable species of the Saracenia. And unlike the official channel plant Frank, Saracenia flava can grow very tall. They are native to the southern coast of the United States, stretching from the coast of Alabama up to the mountains of North Carolina. Next, we have all of these colour variations of the piranha plant to look through and analyse. Well, we've already covered this one. This next one is pretty straightforward. Both Nepenthes and Saracenia have variants that are coloured yellow. In terms of Saracenia, I'm reminded of this Saracenia hybrid because of the translucent windows on its back. I've explained their purpose in my previous video. Hint, hint, click, click. Now you might think that an insectivorous plant couldn't be pink, but you're wrong. As well as there being lots of light reddish Saracenias, there are many Nepenthes species that are a pink colour, such as this Nepenthes vici, which is a species well known for its bright, dazzling colours and peristome. Quick side note, Nepenthes produce different pitchers based on where they are growing on the plant. These are referred to as lower and upper pitchers respectively. Lower pitchers are produced on the lower growth of the plant, normally when the plant is younger, and the upper pitchers are produced in the upper growth on the plant's vines when the plant grows more. Lower pitchers are typically larger, more colourful and more elaborate, and some species have wings. They usually have their pitcher openings on the same side as the tendril. Upper pitchers are usually slenderer and less colourful. They have their openings facing away from the tendril. And since these pitchers are produced on mature vines, the tendrils often have a curl in them that will grasp onto branches for support. <laughs> The 
These are the basal pitches or the lower pitches produced by young plants growing on the forest floor. It's really quite interesting because these traps are similar to species of pitcher plants growing in Palawan, but they're a little bit different. They're much squatter and the, st the structure and the coloration is a bit different as well. So it does give hope this plant could be a new species, but really we have to see the upper pitches and other plants growing in full sunlight to really be sure. And, and here are some other pictures. These are produced from leaves that emanate along the length of the stem, so as the plant climbs up to the canopy. They're generally more brightly coloured, um, often having more nectar, and generally attract more flying insects, particularly flies and wasps. And this allows the plant to really capture a different spectrum of prey up above the canopy, up in the, the upper um, reaches of the vegetation. Moving on to the next colour, again you may think that a black insectivorous plant is unlikely, but then there is the Nepenthes ramispina and the Nepenthes albomarginata, both of which produce purpley black pitchers. I guess that also covers the purple piranha plant then. The Nepenthes albomarginata is really interesting because it stands out from the other pitcher plants with a unique trait. It specifically preys on termites in the jungle, using a white band of trichomes which termites feed on. While grazing, the termites push each other into the pitcher and slowly drown. This is a very unique way of preying on insects, because most Nepenthe species are not really that picky about their food source. Next, we have this white piranha plant. This one is pretty simple, as a Saracenia leucophila is a ghostly white pitcher plant, and is often referred to as the ghost pitcher, or white night pitcher. They're found in the same locations as a Saracenia flava, though their range is more limited. And finally, we have this blue piranha plant. Well, Unfortunately, there aren't any blue insectivorous plants, although there is one thing that is slightly similar. The Nepenthes Kasiana, native to India, glows blue. They have special cells that help them generate an ultraviolet hue, which insects are quite attracted to. Plant biologists have even said that, to the best of our knowledge, this is the most distinct fluorescent emission found in the plant kingdom. But that's not all. It turns out that the Saracenia purpurea also glows an ultraviolet hue. Hey, hey Frank. Can you glow? Do you glow blue? <laughs> what? Now there's just one more thing left to cover. P.T. Piranha. He already takes a lot of inspiration from insectivorous plants like the other piranha plants, but there is one thing in particular that's interesting. His petals. The way they are placed on his head is similar to the formation of the flowers of Saracenia, which are a very peculiar shape to allow insects to pollinate them easily and not get eaten. This is why their flower stalks are very tall, to keep them away from the traps. Most insectivorous plants have long flower stalks, and have strange looking flowers, but the Venus flytrap ones are quite pretty. Well, that just about covers the piranha plant. There are so many unique species of insectivorous plants that I might have missed out a few of the Nepenthes or Saracenias, but I think I've covered the most relevant ones that the piranha plants take cues from. So, what do you think? Does the piranha plant take inspiration from many different species? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time.